Recently, LEGO announced that they would be retiring the Mindstorms line after nearly 25 years. This news seemed to come out of nowhere and has taken many longtime LEGO fans by surprise. Today, we're exploring one of the most innovative lines of toys ever released. We'll take a look at the legacy of LEGO Mindstorms throughout its years of dominance and what LEGO plans to do to replace it. If you go on to enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like rating. The history of Mindstorms doesn't actually begin with LEGO. It starts when a company named Microworlds was founded in 1985. The three founders of Microworlds had the vision of creating a constructible toy that could be powered by computers and used in an educational setting. However, this wasn't the trio's first attempt at combining education and programming. In 1969, they had introduced small turtle robots that could be programmed to follow simple steps using Pappard's programming language called Logo. As computing power increased, so too did the complexity of the programs that were being written. This was an issue though, as their robots had very limited functionality. To fix this, the Microworlds team had a stroke of genius. What if they let users design their own robots that best fit their programs? This marked a major turning point for the company. The team sought a low floor, high ceiling approach, a system that anyone could easily pick up and start building while also offering unlimited potential. To that end, they decided to use LEGO bricks due to the durability and diversity of pieces and its ease of use. When the team approached LEGO about a possible collaboration, it was instant chemistry. LEGO's educational department was founded with nearly the exact same goals in mind, and the two companies clearly had a lot to offer each other. The collaboration quickly got underway and was set up at the newly created Media Lab at MIT in Boston. As a sponsor of the lab, LEGO was allowed royalty-free rights to mass-produce any technology produced by the group, and was also allowed to send an employee over to assist with the research. This man, Alan Toft, helped with the design of the programmable brick. Another big part of the MIT Media Lab was community outreach, so the bricks were going to be used with working with children in schools for both research and educational purposes in development. The first official combination of LEGO bricks and the LOGO programming language that was created by Pappert was called LEGO LOGO, and it launched in 1985. Like the turtles used to carry out LEGO commands, LEGO LOGO employed user-generated scripts to animate LEGO creations. It was hugely important that children could build their own machine to program, since it would help them to care more about their projects and to explore the concepts involved in making them move. These early machines offered a whole new world of possibilities and were incredibly powerful at the time. But they had one major limitation. Everything needed to remain plugged in to a computer. This greatly restricted what could be done, and the designers soon began looking for ways to cut the cable. Well, the solution is this logo brick. Also known as the gray brick, this was the first self-contained computerized brick that LEGO ever made. This brick actually contained the processor from the Apple II computer and ran the same version of LEGO that had been written for that computer. As a result of this built-in processor, the gray brick didn't need to be plugged in to operate. It also featured double the sensors of the previous models. This brick was tested in schools for years and slowly refined, but was never actually released to the public. While the LEGO Logo collaboration was widely popular for those who had access to it, the installation of home computers in the 1980s was still far too low to justify a large-scale product rollout for what it was. By the mid-90s, though, this was beginning to change. In 1996, LEGO began designing what would become Mindstorms. In fact, the name Mindstorms actually comes from a book with the same title, written by Pappert in 1980, where he argues the importance of teaching computer programming early in education. This new kind of product required a new way of thinking. Unlike previous LEGO themes, Mindstorms didn't have any story or thematic elements to drive a narrative. Additionally, the sets didn't include instructions for a single main model. Instead, they included several suggested builds and building techniques that could be used to perform certain tasks. The Mindstorms team was given so much freedom that they were completely independent of the standard LEGO development process and reported directly to the company's senior management. In 1998, LEGO released the very first Mindstorms set for purchase. Selling for $200, set 9719, the robotics invention system came with 733 parts, and most importantly, this the LEGO RCX 1.0. This first version had an 8-bit microcontroller and a whopping 32 kilobytes of RAM for storing and executing programs. Also included in this set were several power cables, gears, Technic pins, motors, multiple sensors, and this one-of-a-kind paper test mat. 
uploading programs to the RCS brick was done using this infrared port and then plugged into a computer and beamed the data directly to the brick. These sets found instant success with hobbyists, hackers, and DIYers of all ages. This success actually took LEGO by surprise and they were unsure how to handle this magnitude. There was, in fact, secure and proprietary code running on these bricks, so just giving that away could be dangerous. After some careful deliberation, they determined that the popularity among the hacking community proved that this was a product worth developing. The next year, the RCX 1.5 was released. This was identical in every way, except that the power jack had been removed, meaning that it can now only be powered by six AA batteries. In 2000, LEGO put out the Scout and the Micro Scout. These were smaller, more affordable versions with fewer sensor and motor inputs. The Micro Scout was sold with the Star Wars Droid Developer and Dark Side Developer kits. These were the only officially licensed sets ever released under the Mindstorms line specifically, and featured the builds of R2-D2 and an AT-AT Walker respectively. Now, LEGO kept refining the RCX, and the final version, the RCX 2.0, was released in 2001 with the Robotics Invention System V2.0. These were available until 2003 and saw wide success. Now, in 2006, LEGO launched the Mindstorms NXT as a total replacement for the robotics invention system. This was a complete overhaul of the Mindstorms line and saw a brand new intelligent brick. This new brick saw several direct upgrades over its predecessor, with a new screen and a better user-friendly built-in menu system. Like the RCX, this featured an 8-bit processor but upped the memory considerably with 256 kilobytes of flash memory and 64 kilobytes of RAM, which was decent for the time. The NXT also featured Bluetooth support, a speaker, and at least on the educational version, a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. The set itself for the NXT included 577 pieces, including three servo motors, four sensors, and seven connection cables. Basically, everything you need to start designing and building your own robot right out of the box. A few years later, in 2009, the NXT 2.0 was released. This contained the exact same intelligent brick from the previous set, but also included a new color sensor, as well as two touch sensors and an ultrasonic sensor. Now, in 2013, LEGO released the third, and now what would turn out to be the final, entry in the Mindstorms line, the EV3. The biggest changes to this generation were in the processing hardware, with the EV3 featuring 64 megabytes of RAM and 16 megabytes of built-in flash memory. The EV3 also has a micro SD slot, Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth, and they can now even be controlled directly from any smartphone and allowed the use of custom apps. The first EV3 set included everything you'd expect in a core Mindstorms release. This set also had instructions for five new robot designs, and LEGO has released 12 more since its launch. The final major release for the Mindstorms line was set number 51515, Robot Inventor, from 2020 and include instructions for even more robots. The EV3 was a huge success for LEGO and hobbyists alike. The power, ease of use, and unlimited potential of these bricks made them a must-have for any fan of robotics. I've actually made an entire video on some of the most incredible LEGO creations ever made, and many of those used one or more NXT or EV3 bricks. I'll provide a link in the description if you want to check it out. But with saying all that, what's next? Now, while it may seem strange that LEGO would completely scrap a much beloved and highly successful series after nearly 25 years, you can rest assured that this wasn't done without good reason. LEGO has always believed in the power of learning through play, and they aren't just about to abandon their flagship product. The reason why Mindstorms is being discontinued is because it's being upgraded to an entirely new platform and redesign. This is LEGO Spike Prime. At first glance, it may seem to be largely identical to the Mindstorm sets. However, once you take a little bit of a closer look though, the differences become more obvious. The new Technic Large Intelligent Hub, as it's officially called, is noticeably smaller than the EV3, allowing to better fit into smaller models and younger hands. Another obvious difference is that the new Spike Prime abandons the LCD display in favor of a greatly simplified 5x5 LED display. This can show simple images, scroll text, and even serve as a status display. Looking at the tech specs though, it is very interesting to note that the new hub has less power and far less RAM than prior versions, however the Spike Hub actually does have twice the storage. In addition, there's actually a Spike app, which is amazingly simple and intuitive to use. People are still learning how far it can go, but if the limits of the EV3 are anything to judge by, the future of Spike looks hugely promising. You can find these sets for sale on a few different websites. They're definitely worth a look. Check out the video description to see where they're available and shop with YouTube's convenient new shopping feature. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one next and subscribe for more LEGO videos.